Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode five of the EC Leader Show. As always, I have my little sidekick over here with me, a little man. Um, and tonight's episode is all about the difference between stress and burnout. So let's dive right in. Let's see who's here. Um, <clears throat> as you're coming in, say hello in the comments section. Um, and I have a welcome question for all of you. Um, let me know what activity makes you feel the most stressed out. So as you're coming in, let me know in the comments section what activity as an early childhood director or owner makes you feel the most stressed out. All right. Let's see who's in town. Brenda's here and Nicole is here. Ah, oh, love seeing familiar faces. Let's see who else is in town. Um, let's see. Angie, it's Cindy, so many fun people. Um, all right, I'm going to give two more minutes here for people to come in. Again, as you're coming in, say hello and let me know in the comments section what is the number one project, activity, task, um, person, environment in your school that makes you the most stressed out, um, makes you feel the most stressed out. All right. And let's see here. Let's see who else is here. I um, just want to invite lots of people. Um, having to discipline the staff. Hi, Susan. Hi, Rivka. Thank you. I know he's getting bigger and bigger every day. It's like so cute. Total, total obsession fest going on. Um, all right. Let's see. Do one more minute. Excuse you, Mistel. You need to be polite. We got ladies over here. Um... Okay, and Lori, whoopsie, just got kicked out over there. Um, Diane, okay, awesome. All right, we are in business. Stephanie, hey, excited to talk to you tomorrow. Uh, I get most stressed out when I have to remind my staff of things that I've already discussed with them, absolutely. Um, Susan, negative people, people with bad attitudes towards change, awesome, 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 okay. So um, I want to start off by talking, just highlighting the top three indicators of stress and burnout. I'm going to talk about what the difference be between stress and burnout is because there is a clear distinction. And I want you guys to really listen carefully because it's really important that you guys are taking in what I'm saying and filtering it through what you're actually feeling right now in your center. Because if you're feeling either of these things, um, I'm going to share some action steps for you guys as well. You want to make sure that you're not too much deep into these, um, into these things. So um, I saw this really interesting quote that I want to share by um, Stacy Gordon, which is burnout is the car crash that you don't see coming. Um, and I'll repeat that. Burnout is the car crash that you don't see coming. Um, stress, for unfortunately for most people, stress has become a constant in their life. And it, they just become so used to it. And it's like, okay, whatever. I'm just, I'm always stressed out. I always have a lot on my plate, right? Um, and then burnout is this, this car crash because all of a sudden we get this burnout feeling. We're like, oh my God, where did that come from? Like, why am I crashing? Like, why is this happening? Hi, Kim. Why is this happening? Um, and so I want to highlight what those red flags are, what those signals are, so that that car crash doesn't happen to you guys in your child care centers. So um, the top three signals are fatigue, inadequacy, and cynicism. I'll say that again. Fatigue, inadequacy, and being, um, uh, being cynical. So, and then within stress and burnout, if you're looking at it kind of like in two different columns, um, they each have very, very different signals, okay? So I'm gonna start off with fatigue, okay? When you're stressed out and you're feeling fatigue, it's just this general feeling that you're just less energetic and you're just more tired on most days. So instead of like five days a week, you'd be energetic and your full self and excited and motivated and all of that um, when you're feeling stressed out and fatigued 
then probably three out of the five days or even two out of the five days, you're feeling this feeling of fatigue, um, which is fine if it's every once in a while. You're, you're looking for like the constant of that, okay? So that's where when you're stressed out. When you're burned out in this fatigue mindset, it's this incredibly emotionally exhausting feeling um, that you dread doing everything. So a couple of months ago, I actually spoke with a director who didn't even realize that she was in burnout. When I was on the phone with her, I'm like, you're burnt out. You're, you're like, you're done. You're not stressed out anymore. You're like, you're, a, you're over the hill. Um, you, you need to take a week vacation and come back and we'll talk then. Because right now, everything that I say is just exhausting to you. You dread coming to work. You're not excited about your job. You don't even see any hope anymore. Um, and she was like, yeah, like that's, that's how I feel right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm done. That's burnout. She, she's not, she doesn't even want to come to her center anymore. Okay. That's burnout. Okay. The problem was she didn't see the signals that came beforehand when she was feeling stressed out. So let me know in the comment section, for those of you that just came in, I know a whole bunch of new people just came in. We're talking about the difference between stress and burnout as an early childhood owner and director. Um, let me know in the comments if you sometimes feel fatigued um, in the way that I just described it as a stress point. Um, or if some days you feel like you have that burnout feeling where you're just dreading to come to work that day. Um, again, no one is judging you for feeling like this. Seriously, no one. Anyone that judges over here is being kicked out. Um, no one is allowed to judge anyone here. We are all human beings. We all run extremely stressful and difficult jobs. Um, that's why I do these Facebook lives because it's really important for people to understand that you guys are not alone in this, okay? This is not, um, you're not in this like, island that you know no one else exists so let me know in the comments um you know what what what's going on like what you guys feel you know on different occasions hi crystal okay um google says winter also adds a fatigue for sure because you're stuck inside you know definitely i always say that um you know for my husband it needs to be summer 12 months a year because when he's in the summer he's like a completely different human being it's like you know um, summer mayor. Um, so totally, totally agree with you on that. Um, so Brenda says, yes, on occasion, um, experience both. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate that. It, it kind of sets, sets the boat, um, for other people. Um, I've experienced both. Thankfully not now. Great. So you know what that feels like, you know, you know, that feeling, um, I've experienced stress that time. No, know the burnout from feeling two years ago. Yes. Okay. So we all kind of have that, where we've either felt burnout before and we're grateful we're not in that spot anymore. We have that stressful feeling. So that's like that fatigue, okay? Now let's go to inadequacy. Why are you being such a little fidget pants? What's the matter? What's the matter? Come here. Come here. Sure. You know, mommy talk to our friends. Um, so let's talk about inadequacy, okay? So when you're feeling stressed out, when you're in the stress phase, hi, Tammy. When you're in the stress phase of inadequacy, it's you show up less, okay? So you kind of talk less at meetings. Um, you participate a little bit less often, like if the teachers are sitting and lounging together and having lunch together, you typically are not going to walk in there as much because you're just not interested in that social conversation. Um, the classrooms aren't up to the way that you want it to be, and you're feeling inadequate. You're like, why isn't the school looking to the standard that I want it to be? Why aren't the teachers showing up in the way that I want? Um, and you're feeling this real feeling of like, like, what's going on here? Like, why, why isn't this happening? But you're not in the burnout phase yet because if you were in the burnout phase, then you you're having this feeling of like, why, why am I even doing this job? Like, why was I even hired? Like, if they only knew what was really going on here you know, the owners would fire me or whatever it is. Like you're feeling this like, I shouldn't even be doing this job. Like this real imposter syndrome because nothing is showing up the way that you want it to be. Um, so the stress feeling is very normal at different seasons where, you know, the teachers aren't showing up. Their classrooms don't reflect the way that you want. Their, their competency level is short of the way that you want them to deliver um so that's like that stressful side the burnout side is just oh my god why was I even hired why am I here um so again just let me know in the comments section again and I'm gonna obviously share solutions and um different strategies for this so 
you know, bear with me, but let me know in the comment section um, when you're thinking about inadequacy. If you sometimes feel just a little inadequate, like overwhelmed, underperforming, um, just overcommitted in that way. Um, stressed out last week. Took the morning off and went feeling frustrated, but I took care of myself. Yes. Oh my gosh, we're going to talk about self care very, very soon. I'm like a self care junkie. Um, Hey, Amy, I'm just starting a center and I'm there. Yes, yes, because it is. It's difficult. It's a, it's a difficult place um, to be in, definitely. Okay, so again, let me know in the comments um, when we're talking about inadequacy. Um, when do you sometimes feel inadequate as a director or as an owner? Like, what happens either in your day or something that the teachers are doing or that the parents are doing that makes you feel, oh, my gosh, like, Oh, like you have this feeling of inadequacy. So like, I'll just share personally, I have so many times that I feel inadequate like as a parent. Like right now, my baby is just not really sitting as quietly as I'd like him to be sitting when I'm running this Facebook Live right now. So, you know, we all have these feelings of inadequacy. Like my daughter took a nap today by day because she was tired and then I couldn't get her to go to sleep on time and I'm like, oh my gosh, like why can't I do bedtime properly? Um, so we all have these like inadequate feelings of, like, what am I even doing? Like, I might be equipped to, like, have four kids and take care of them properly. Um, total imposter syndrome that, you know, that comes in like that. So let me know in the comments, when do you feel inadequate? Um, <clears throat> stress cycles come and go, but I currently feel great about things most days. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And that's normal, Stephanie. Um, simple things just should be flowing, and teachers aren't realizing the importance of doing those things. It gets super frustrating. Um, Amy, not being able to keep everyone happy. Yeah. Um, you're never going to be able to keep everyone happy. <laughs> um, that's really important to remember. Um, there, there's no such a thing as everyone being happy. Um, and your job as the director is not to keep everyone happy. Your job as the director is to create a center that is a wonderful environment, that is collaborative, that is inviting, that is warm, that is homey. Um, same thing like you do in a house. Um, your kids aren't going to be happy all the time with you. Um, that doesn't make you an inadequate parent. That doesn't make you a bad parent. It makes you a parent. Um, so I think, and I remember this because I worked with the director one-on-one -on -one last year really, really closely. And um, one of the first mindset shifts that we did was her realizing that she is never going to succeed at making every parent and every teacher happy. And the minute that she really let go of that expectation of herself, is when the school really started thriving. It was when the school really started growing. It's when her enrollment grew. It's when her connection with the teachers got better. It's when everything shifted because she finally took off this yoke of this like crazy chains off of her of this ridiculous expectation that she could make everyone happy. Um, so Brenda, when I can't keep all the balls in the air that I'm trying so hard to keep there, yes. So we're going to talk about that concept of delegating very soon. But yes, trying to keep all those balls up in the air, something's going to drop, okay? Always, always. Um, and we just want to make sure that the right ball is dropping um, or that you're not picking it up to begin with, you know? Um, okay, let's go into the third thing, which is um, cynicism, being cynical, okay? So when you're feeling stressed out, okay, this, this cynical side of you comes up where your formerly optimistic self, you're kind of feeling just when people pitch ideas to you or when your admin team sends something or the team, like you're just, you're more pessimistic than usual. Um, and you'll kind of find that in yourself. So like I find myself sometimes like my kids will say something to me and like if I'm like in this stressful period, I'll all of a sudden get sarcastic and I'm like, oh my God, what did I just say? Um, so your, your formerly optimistic, positive side of yourself kind of gets this like pessimistic, little bit of a darker side. Um, the main thing is you want it to be this phase that really moves very, very quickly. So then, you know, it's just this stressful little block of time. Burnout is this feeling of like, why bother? Okay. You don't even try. Okay. You don't even listen to considerations of new ideas or perspective or um, perspective, new initiatives or things like that. You're like, why bother? Like, what, like, what am I doing this for? For them, for these teachers who don't show up, who don't do anything? Like, why should I even try? Um, and you just have this in, like horrible cynical side to you. So 
like I'll give you an example. So uh, just like a, a different example of like what it means to be like really cynical about something. So um, my husband works in a Talmudic college, and one of the things that he does with the boys there in the college is he has this eye for um, addictions and just for the boys that are you know addicted to either alcohol or drug, whatever just all kinds of stuff so he kind of has this eye for it and he helps them get help or gets them in touch with their parents or whatever it is and he kind of gets the first phase started into helping them out anyways we had this boy over in our house for a friday night dinner and my husband let me know before he came over that um i think he was like five weeks sober or something like that um and so we should just kind of be careful you know with the wine at the table whatever it was so i was like okay Anyways, the boy was there. It was great. It was a really nice meal. He's a really sweet boy. Um, and the following week, we had this other this other couple over, and I was talking about like how amazing this person was, and how he's five weeks sober, and like he's really you know on this journey. And this person was like, ah, whatever. People like never really remain sober. Like you know, it's like you know, once you're an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. And I was like, oh my god. I don't know if I ever want you in my house again. You are such a cynical person. Like, you really don't believe in people. Um, that's, like, cynicism. Like, to me, that was, like, the ultimate of, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I don't like that energy. So totally separate topic. Again, like, talking about, you know, drinking, which is just something so different from what we're talking about in early childhood. But I just want to share that, like, other end of the continuum of, like, what it means when someone so cynical like he just he gives up he doesn't even believe in people um so again going back to yourself do you have you just given up on some of your teachers that they're just never going to change that this is just always the way that it's going to be and um you know where where is um where where are you standing as far as that stress burnout thing um okay so let me jump in here in the comments real quickly and just see what's going on before i go into some of the solutions um, okay, Crystal says when we run staff meetings, that seems super positive, and the pe pedagogistas run the meetings, and the very next day, it seems like this black cloud is hovering over the center. Yeah, because that's where the implementation and the frameworks come in, Crystal. And I know that you've been doing some catch up in the inner circle, which is amazing. Um, you want to get those frameworks rolling. So, like the meet the deadline framework, the sketch it grid, all those awesome frameworks that we have in there to help the, your teachers meet their deadlines to help keep the momentum going with accountability with results like those are super super important um I feel inadequate after hiring someone and finding out that they're completely not suitable for the job yeah so again Tammy we're actually having someone awesome um next month actually yeah February is we're here already so at the end of February um in the inner circle we have someone talking about teacher onboarding um and talking about how to ask the right questions um and how to make sure that you're really hiring the right person so you are definitely in the right place um okay so let's talk about the top four things that I see early childhood directors and owners doing that put them at a higher risk for stress and burnout. Okay. Again, this not necessarily does this put you at a higher risk, but from doing research and from talking to directors and from just listening to you guys in the comments and support sessions and just hearing everything that you're talking about and then just doing some of my own research, these are the top four things that consistently put you at risk for higher levels of stress and burnout, okay? Number one, working overtime frequently, okay? Give me a yes in the comments or a, like a big emoji if you work overtime, period. If you've ever worked overtime. Um, and then let me know if you do it frequently, okay? So let me know in the comments, yes, I work overtime, work overtime frequently or give me a big emoji guilty or write guilty um that you work overtime um absolutely absolutely not much as i used to i do it frequently okay yes oh hi sarah good to see you all the time okay always okay great so my research actually matched up with what directors actually do um google wants to know how many hours are overtime if you're asking that you're working overtime baby <laughs> um hi it's good to see you sarah okay so number one is working overtime frequently okay number two working on vacation even just to check email that's working okay so if you're going away on a retreat or you're going to disneyland or you're going on vacation or you're just going out to dinner with your husband and you're checking email in the car 
or while your husband goes to take a pee break in the restaurant and you open your phone to check stupid email, that puts you at higher risk for burnout because you cannot let go. So Stephanie wants to know what's vacation. <laughs> so I actually just I actually just um, put a, a deposit. Um, we're going on a family vacation in the summer in August, um, and we're going away for eight days. And I we've never done this before, and I'm like so nervous. But I already told my husband I'm like I need to start like mentally preparing myself for eight days that I am not going to be checking email. I'm not going to be on social media. I'm just I'm not gonna be doing this I have to I have to make this commitment um so yes this the second thing is working on vacation even if it's just a check email okay so hi April trying to stop working at a certain time at night so yeah so this is something super important um this is one thing that I've actually implemented as far as just becoming better at my stress levels um and it's helped me so much okay so let me know in the comments if you have an alarm clock that wakes you up in the morning Okay, just let me know yes or a why. Just let me know if you have an alarm clock that wakes you up in the morning. Yeah, Nicole, I'm going away for eight days. I, I still can't believe I did that, but I did, and I was like, this is like, we're doing this. Um, in the summer, I, I'm, I'm so excited. I already booked it, right? Can you imagine? It's like, like, like seven months. Um, okay, so let me know in the comments if you have an alarm clock that wakes you up. I think every single person has an alarm clock, but only one person said yes. So I'm assuming... That is she's saying yes for everyone. Now you all have alarm clocks that wake you up, okay? So one of the things that I started doing is I actually have an alarm clock at night that tells me to stop working, okay? So just like I have an alarm clock that tells me when I have to wake up in the morning, although now my alarm clock is, this little man is my alarm clock. Mm. Um, but I have an alarm clock at night. Okay, and my alarm clock at night goes off, and that's my alarm clock that it's time to stop working. And that's when I power off the computer, it's when I power off my computer uh, phone, it's when I close my planner, it's when I just put away all the books, like anything that could possibly um, remind me of like, you know, just what I've been doing all day, and that's when I start my evening routine. I have a cup of tea, I, you know, settle down in the kitchen, I kick up and just, you know, do some other kind of reading, nothing, just, excuse me, relaxing, reading, um, take a shower, whatever it is, just my evening routine to help me get ready for bed. Um, nothing to do with work. And when you put on this alarm clock, it just tells you, that's it, it's time to stop. Um, so Brenda says, yes, I have that as well, one hour before I go to bed. Um, Susan says, maybe I can catch up on those eight days. <laughs> um, you have an alarm clock, I'm usually awake. Yeah, I, I have an eternal alarm clock also. Like, you know, if I lay down to take a nap, I'm telling my husband, I'm like, okay, wake me up in 45 minutes. Like, 43 minutes later, I'm like in the kitchen. He's like, I was just going to wake you up. I'm like, I know. Um, so, okay. So that's, um, that's a, another thing just to remember is like set an alarm clock at night that you have to stop working. Okay. So number one was working overtime frequently. Number two was working on vacation, even just to catch up on email. Number three is checking email on the weekend or while you're in bed. Okay. So if you're in bed and your phone is your alarm clock, so your phone comes into the bedroom with you. If you check your email when you're in bed or your Facebook page to listen to parents, um, complaints or whatever, um, you're putting yourself at risk for burnout and stress. Okay. And the last thing is taking time away from sleep to get caught up, which means that you're like, okay, so tonight I'm going to sleep for four hours or five hours because, you know, I have to catch up on X, Y, and Z. So here's the thing. It's okay to do that every once in a while, right? So like, you know, before I have a big launch or before I have a big event coming up, Sure, sometimes I'm going to be taking time away from sleep because I have this big deadline that's coming up. The problem is, is that if you always have these big deadlines and you always have to take away time from sleep, that means that you're not planning properly, okay? Because that shouldn't always be happening. Um, so that's, okay, so that's the fourth thing as far as just putting yourself at high risk for that, okay? So <clears throat> let's talk about just a couple of solutions and a couple of just mindset shifts. Um, and then I'm going to sign up because this little guy um, needs some kind of relaxing. He needs mommy to calm down. I think he's feeling that mommy's up and she's talking. Um, okay, so Nicole says all oh, this is too familiar. Yes. So again, just you're, this is this is part of life, right? This is why we do these things. Just you're part of this community, okay? So the first thing is you have to understand the frameworks and how your school operates, which is 
it, which is more importantly becoming the master of your time okay so for people that are part of the inner circle know this I obsessively talk about this um, tracking your time theming batching like time blocking all of this super super important to understand um, understanding what high leverage tasks are like what are you really supposed to spend your time doing delegating just all of these pieces super super important to become laser focused on that so you really understand where your time is supposed to go and then what you're supposed to automate and delegate um, and optimize um, which by the way is going to be a big theme of the live event that's going to be at the end of June I'm going to be talking about that much later but I'm going to be bringing someone in hopefully um, trying to get the speaker who's going to be talking about how to make sure that you are automating and delegating the right tasks because too many times as directors we delegate the wrong things we try to automate things that shouldn't be automated um, like I just with a director last week and I asked her what she does in the morning and she said that her admin team like her personal assistant um, greets the parents at the door because she doesn't have time for that she needs to do other things and I was like no no no, no. you got this all backwards you need to greet families in the morning your assistant can do all of the stuff that you're doing in your office so again just a complete misunderstanding of how the school operates in the frameworks okay um yeah, working on being on a time, yes, for sure. Um, so just becoming the master of your time, understanding, delegating, all of these pieces are central to becoming less stressed out, okay? And just, you're, you're going to see the results of that as you become more, uh, as you become a better decision maker. You're going to be less stressed out. You're going to be less burnt out. Um, my mentor, Todd Herman, a lot of you guys know who he is. Um, one of the things he always talks about, you know, every time I get on the phone with him, he always says one thing. Honey, you do not have any problems. You have decisions to make, okay? And the more that you flex your decision-making skills, the less problems you're going to have in your life because every time you're faced with something, you're like, oh, my God, this is a problem. No, 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 it's not a problem. You have a decision to make. You want to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? You know, what are your options? What's in front of you? Well, I don't have any options. No, 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 no. There's no such a thing as no options. You think you have no options because your brain has only thought of these choices. That's why you need mentors. That's why you need coaches. That's why you need to surround yourself with an incredible community so that you are leveraging other people's geniuses and understanding how to become a better decision maker. Um, so anyways, just regrouping over here, uh, for those of you that came late or watching the replay, uh, just pulling everything together, we spoke about fatigue, inadequacy, and cynicism as the top three um, signals of stress and burnout. And understanding how that filters into our school, how that affects our school frameworks and our dynamics, and just everything that you know rolls around with that. Um, so if you are listening to this and this is like you and you're not part of our inner circle yet or you're just you're just becoming part of my world this is like the first Facebook live that you're watching um I want you to write inside the comments excellence um if you're interested in getting on the phone and chatting about this a little bit more understanding the framework of your school how you operate how teachers are working um just what is going on in your school and you want to get a little bit of a better lens in that um just type excellence in the comments and I'll private message you and let you know um, just about some ways that we could talk together on the phone and some different frameworks that you could start working with it and some strategies to get you started. Um, anyways, I am going to be checking out over here. My little guy is um, getting a little fussy here, but as you guys check out, um, let me know what your big aha moment was from today's session. Um, so was it something new that you realized about yourself? Was it something that you, you realized, you know what, I'm not as stressed out as I thought I actually was? Um, that's a great thing. Um, so let me know in the comments, what was your big aha moment as you sign out now? Let's see over here. Just going through the comments if there's any questions that I didn't answer. Awesome, awesome, April, great, awesome. Yeah, for those of you that are watching this and you live in Florida, that is where I'm gonna be in the summer um, for eight days and I'm gonna be planning some really cool stuff while I'm there. Um, 
I want to do a um, VIP dinner. So if you live in Florida or any directors live near there, um, tell them to reach out to me because I'm going to be hosting um, one evening. We're going to do something awesome um, for directors and owners um, in that Miami area. Um, so let's see here. What are some of the takeaways? Um, okay. So Nicole says, getting a handle on the risk factor so stress doesn't become burnout. Awesome. Nicole, love it. Um, Brenda says, to completely unplug on vacation. Yes, that is my girl. Stephanie, this week I've realized that I'm in a pretty good place with my schools, and you confirmed that with this Facebook Live. Yay! High five. Um, Susan, I clearly see what caused my burnout and what I'm going to avoid going forward. Amazing. That is awesome. So glad you got that clarity. Confirming what I do to prevent stress and burnout. Thank you. You are welcome, Rivka. Uh, alarm, uh, setting an alarm clock for the end of the workday. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. My little man says goodbye as well. He's very grateful I'm signing out. And I will see you all next week um, on our next episode six. And I'll be letting you guys know later this week what we're going to be talking about. All the best. Take care. Bye.